Thank you for that, Moira, and thank you uh, uh, for hosting us today. Uh, as many folks know here, I'm a big fan of Lakehead University and the extraordinary work they do, not just here in the city and for the benefit of students across northern Ontario in the most comprehensive and, and broadly uh, thinking way, but um, particularly for northwestern Ontario, uh, west of Thunder Bay. I'm very excited to be here today. This has been um, uh, a project that we've been working on for the past year and a bit, I'd say, Karina. Um, it, um, it is really uh, about turning an opportunity, uh, turning an issue into an opportunity. Um, and that's precisely what we endeavor to do. For me, and, and I'm going off script a little bit here, so if you see some nervous staff out there, um, <laughs> fair warning. Um, it was actually triggered by a visit that I had made to the Sugar Zone, how sweet it was, you know, the, uh, uh, the Heart Gold Project. And we um, had come down uh, from the mining project to White River at the junction there and stopped in at the A&W with, with the Premier and I. And there sitting in the parking lot, was one of the most gorgeous buses I've ever seen in my life. And it said Ontario Northland Transportation Commission, ONTC on the side. And I thought, boy, wouldn't it be nice to have a bus like that go all the way out uh, into the far-reaching places of northwestern Ontario. Dare to dream. Um, and so I came back and, and we spoke. I spoke with Karina and I said, you know, I appreciate what this is doing for uh, Northeastern Ontario, but I think that folks in Northwestern Ontario would appreciate a similar kind of service. And in fact, then what we would do is we would think, as I always had, of the opportunity that would evolve uh, once Greyhound had made its final, some would say painful, decision to pull off of the Trans-Canada. A number of years ago, I, I took the Greyhound bus for various reasons. I often flew from Ottawa to Winnipeg and would take the, the 1015 bus in. Uh, it ran twice a day, and then it went down to one. And by then, frankly, most Northwestern Ontarians were simply not using the bus service. The bus was full because it was a pan-Canadian route and booked far enough in advance. There were people in droves coming from particularly Alberta heading back home and there were no seats available for for uh, passengers commuting from different parts of the country, but most importantly, university students and seniors who weren't driving or don't drive the long distances, but had to get to Winnipeg or had to get to Thunder Bay. And I know that in Thunder Bay, it's the same heading east. So this project um, came from a very boots on the ground level a sensibility that by the time Greyhound had pulled off and in the absence, if you will, uh, of a bus transportation route, uh, I would work with ONTC under my ministry to um, start an expansion process for this bus service. And think about it as a corridor of opportunity for uh, people across Northern Ontario and from parts of far-reaching eastern Ontario to get uh, across our vast and beautiful region. And in my hometown of Kenora, of course, the population doubles. It's actually a little bit more than that. There are tourists coming. Um, there's an abundance of opportunity uh, for people to be moved around the region, not just by car, not just by truck, uh, not just by air, but also by bus. So today I'm proud to be here to announce that the Ontario Northland will be extending its inter-community bus service from White River to Thunder Bay this April. Congratulations to the City of Thunder Bay. The A&W at White River will just be a stop now, not the end of its route. And Moira, for the students who come from as far as Ottawa, they'll now be able to get on that beautiful bus with the widened aisles and the nicer seats. 
I think it's Wi-Fi as well. Wi -Fi. It's the, I mean, this bus, you won't eat, you'll forget Greyhound even existed. If there's a Greyhound, former Greyhound employee here, I don't mean to disrespect you, but you get on this bus and you're going to have the kind of service that Northwestern Ontario people deserve and should expect, um, especially when the Ontario Northland Transportation Commission uh, is funded by us, the taxpayer. And that's an important principle. Um, and as we uh, endeavor to distribute more fairly the wealth and prosperity, or in stronger terms, the opportunity for the entire region to benefit from some of the resources that the Ontario taxpayer invests in these kinds of assets. I can say that uh, Karina and her extraordinary team have put the pencil to paper and made this work. We uh, believe that connecting people across all of Northern Ontario is a key pillar of our government's uh, plan to build Ontario together. We're focused on identifying options that will help us build a modern and sustainable transportation system that, pe that serves people across the entire North. Is, is, are people tracking the trajectory of my, uh, my speech today? Um, I'm just delighted that ONTC has made this commitment um, and it's a testament to our government's commitment to make sure uh, that Northwestern Ontario is read into the sensibilities of uh, a transportation network, a, a bus system, intercommunity bus system that works uh, for us all. I can tell you, and I asked my friends from the media here in Northwestern Ontario um, to uh, contain your enthusiasm for the story that we hope moves beyond today. We see Thunder Bay as a pivotal city um, that has the opportunity to do two things. To one, move beyond its borders, hopefully in the not too distant future to share in this kind of announcement uh, in other parts of Northwestern Ontario, but to also send a clear message to our private partners that we see an extraordinary opportunity to develop a main bus line that will then uh, complement and enhance the business opportunity of private operators to move out into smaller uh, communities uh, that have high potential bus passenger uh, volume um, and make Northwestern Ontario, as it is in Northeastern Ontario currently, a place that you can truly get around in uh, by bus should you so choose. I'm looking forward to the opportunity of showcasing this magnificent asset. Somebody told me that the, one of the buses mm -hmm. is actually here in town and I thought that if the weather was just a little bit better, uh, we could have had the announcement right in front of it. Um, it's a beautiful bus. It's coming to Thunder Bay. It's bringing students um, from as far away as Ottawa, Moira, it will bring uh, tourists who choose to take bus as an option uh, to this amazing city and hopefully in the not too distant future beyond. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're here in Thunder Bay uh, to successfully uh, state our case that Northwestern Ontario is in play, that we will belong to an extraordinary intercommunity bus service. And I want to thank ONTC uh, for the work that they've done uh, and for working hard with me and, and our government um, to make uh, today and tomorrow uh, a successful uh, endeavor. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Greg Richard. I'm a member of Provincial Parliament for Kenora Rainy River. It's a privilege and an honor to serve my constituents. And as a big fan of this amazing city, we call Thunder Bay to serve you too. Thank you for this opportunity.